All right, we have a box being pushed on the floor um, at a constant velocity. I think this is different than the first practice test because I think I had acceleration in the first practice test. So this is actually a great way to look at the problem in a different way. So we will have a normal force. We will have a weight. Let's draw the applied force here. And we will have a friction force going backwards. All right, so the applied force and the friction force are uh, having a tug of war. Neither of them win because the forces are balanced, so we just move at constant velocity. But continuing with this idea, let's actually calculate this kinetic friction force, um, which is going to be um, mu kinetic times the normal force. All right, now to get the normal force, Let's balance forces in the y direction. So we're going to have Fn minus Fg equals 0. And um, for Fg, let's just calculate that as 25 times 10. That's 250 newtons. Again, this is G and this is M. So we're going to end up getting the normal force uh, when we simplify here is going to be 250 newtons. So, getting the um, force of friction, uh, we're going to take 0 0.2 times 250, and that is going to give us a friction force of 25, sorry, of 50. Let's do all that again. So, the kinetic friction is going to be 0 0.2 times 250, and that'll give us a 50 Newton force. Now, given that forces are balanced horizontally, I can now use the balanced force equation to tell me that Fa minus this 50 Newton friction force balances to zero. And finally, what we're going to get is that Fa equals 50 newtons. Excellent. Now in part B, what we are told is that we have our object moving uh, a little bit differently in that we've kept the pushing force the same, but now we have an acceleration of one meters per second squared. And just to be absolutely clear on what that means, if we have an acceleration of one meter per second squared, we need to get very clear on the fact that what that tells us is that the forces are unbalanced. So now we have Fa, as given in part A, minus a new force of friction equals m times A. That's 50 minus the force of friction will make our 25 kilogram mass accelerate at one meters per second squared. I'm seeing a lot of people put in 10 for acceleration on every single problem they do. Please be careful, be clear. 10 meters per second squared only applies to an object that is falling in general. Now when we isolate, we're gonna get that the friction force is equal to 25 newtons. So, to get the coefficient of friction, we've got kinetic friction equal to mu k times the normal force. So that's going to tell us that 25 is going to be mu k times this 250. And that means that our coefficient of kinetic friction is going to be 0 0.1. So we have this number and this number. Now it says, determine the speed of the box after three seconds, assuming the acceleration is what was given in part B, and the box starts from rest. Now, since we have an acceleration, we're going to use suvat. So that's V equals, th equals sorry, um, the acceleration was one meters per second squared. The time is three seconds, and we start from rest. So we're getting three meters per second. Now the girl's going to let go of the box, uh, but the friction force still acts on it. So let's very carefully calculate uh, what that means 
in terms of the acceleration or the new acceleration. So we actually need a full new free body diagram complete with normal force, weight force, and um, sorry, the friction force is going this way, right? Yes, to the left. Um, and just to be clear, I want to get rid of this little dude. Perfect. All right. Now, continuing to keep this in mind, let's go ahead. So remember, friction force always fights what we are doing. And the effect of this friction force is m times a. Now, the friction force that we got was 25 newtons, so we have negative 25 from part B equals m, which is 25, times a, which is the acceleration. So a is going to be negative 1 meters per second squared. So let's get the time it takes to come to rest. Well, we have suvat v equals at plus u is the equation we will bring down. So v is going to be 0. And then we have negative 1 times the time plus the 3 meters per second. So eventually we are going to get a time equal to 3 seconds for it to stop. All right, so that is...